If you've had a C-section but would like to deliver your next baby vaginally, it's important to start addressing post-cesarean scar tissue as early on as possible. It is possible if you're already pregnant, you can also address this, but the earlier you get started, the better. My name is Dr. Jocelyn Conley. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist and co-founder of The Vagina Docs. And in this video, I'm gonna show you an at-home, do-it-yourself myofascial release technique to start working on opening up your scar from your cesarean delivery. Myofascial release is different than traditional massage based on what the technique targets. With traditional massage, the target is the smooth, the, the smooth muscle fibers, the elastin, but not so much the collagenous barrier, which myofascial release addresses. So what you may find is after you get a massage, you cut 45 minutes later, you may feel tight again versus with, fat, with myofascial release, the target is the fascial system, and the fascial system surrounds every cell in our body, including the connective tissue that supports or surrounds the muscle tissue. So what I typically find is my patients continue to feel a cumulative benefit versus going back to where they started. And the great thing is myofascial release should not be painful, depending on the type or the practitioner that you're being seen, you're, you're being seen by. It is super gentle and it's safe during pregnancy and then also early on in the postpartum period. It's important that I make the recommendation in teaming up with a pelvic floor physical therapist who can assess your scar and how it's affecting your other muscles and soft tissue attachments to the pelvis, which will affect your pelvis, your 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 pelvis's ability to open up during the actual delivery process. A lot of times women who have had cesarean deliveries are not, they're not educated in the effect of cesarean deliveries on the pelvic floor function. And it's not uncommon for someone to feel that or believe that just because they had a cesarean delivery, their pelvic floor is fine. Oftentimes, pelvic floor dysfunction dates back to childhood and teens and all of the things that we did or, or issues that we had around our cycle, which could result in restrictions within the pelvic floor. Whether those, restri re whether those restrictions existed early on or started to started to develop after the cesarean delivery due to scar tissue, it's important to have a professional assess you and begin opening up the tissues so that they can then tell you, okay, focus on this area versus that area. But it's also important for them to give you tools so that you could work on it on your own so that you could really maximize your time in pelvic floor physical therapy. When doing this technique, I recommend doing it while lying on your back with your face up. For the ease of the video, I'm gonna demonstrate it in standing, but know that in standing, my muscles are not fully relaxed and I can't really get into the tissues as I would if I were lying on my back. First thing you'll do is locate your scar. So as you can see, I have drawn on a scar. And at first, I'm just going to to assess over the scar and see if there are any spots that are particularly tender over other spots. It isn't uncommon for women to have more restrictions over the right side, especially if their surgeon was a right-handed surgeon or whomever who stitched them up. The other thing is you want your scar fully healed, so do make sure that you're getting clearance if you're early on after cesarean delivery that you're not doing this. Uh, without first getting clearance from your OB and then your pelvic floor physical therapist. But once you've assessed where are tender, sensitive spots, then your PT or your massage therapist, whoever you're working with, should give you guidance on where to focus. But where I often tell my patients is I tell them to work on the areas just above and just below the scar and you can sink your fingers. So if this is my scar and I notice that it's stiffer here, I'm going to sink my fingertips into the tissue underneath the scar. I'm going to sink until I feel resistance of the tissue down, like inward, and then I'm going to pull my fingers away from one another without sliding until 
again, I feel resistance and the tissues are not going to pull further unless I force them. And I'm just gonna hold this position for five plus minutes and just until the tissue begins to let go. And I don't wanna just stop at that five or seven minute mark. I wanna stop once the tissues are done moving. But generally, five to seven minutes is a good starting point, but if you notice this is uncomfortable, you may have to build on that. Or, or, or build, start at one or two minutes and then build from there. Then I'm gonna go to the next spot. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna sink in. Once I feel tissue resistance, I'm gonna start pulling my fingers away from one another without sliding and I'm gonna hold there. And then I'm gonna repeat along the scar. I could also do that on top of the scar as well. And I can also work on the softness of the scar directly by just sinking my fingers into the scar and just holding there. If you are pregnant, you wanna be more gentle and you can do the exact same thing, but you're not, nothing should be painful and you should first get clearance from your pelvic floor physical therapist and your OB. After you do this, it shouldn't be more painful or sensitive. If you do have that, it is possible that you did too much. So be on the lookout for that as well as pay attention to overall sensitivity of the scar, how you're moving, if the scar seems to have less restriction on your overall abdominal function and hip and pelvic function. But generally speaking, I have my patients do this on a daily basis for two, one to two weeks and even beyond that, or we'll adjust the frequency, but everyone's gonna be a little bit different. So in this video, I covered the importance of addressing the fascial restrictions. These fascial restrictions from that scar tissue can impact your pelvis, your pelvis's ability to move to allow for passage of baby through the birth canal. And we want to be proactive in doing the things that we need to do to allow for the opening so that baby doesn't get stuck in the birth canal and we have to get another C-section. The other thing I went over is the gentle fascial technique. We, I went over above and below the scar as well as directly onto the scar. Some things I didn't mention, you may notice heat release, you may notice opening that you can actually feel, but you also might not feel anything. Everyone's sensitivity and being able to feel this stuff it, is different. So don't be hard on yourself if you don't feel anything. Lastly, if you have any questions about anything I covered, please comment below or reach out directly. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you found this content was helpful. And if you know someone who wants to have a vaginal delivery, whether that's soon, whether that's in the future, share this video with them so they are aware of what they can do proactively to make the delivery process, the labor and the delivery process as smooth as possible. Thank you again for watching. My name is Dr. Jocelyn with the Vagina Docs and I'll see you on the next video.